Hello my friends, in today's video I'm going to talk about something pretty highly requested and that is how to know when to stop painting or how to not overwork a painting. This is something that I think every single artist struggles with and struggles creating a balance with, but I have a couple of tips and rules that I employ for my own work that make it a lot easier for me to know what details I want to add to a piece and where I should just leave it. I feel that I'm pretty type A in a lot of ways and that does not include my paintings. I am a lazy painter, I get bored easily, I get tired, and I don't like working on paintings in multiple sessions. I think this is one of my detriments as an artist because really good paintings take dozens or hundreds of hours to create and I'm someone who wants to get it all done in one sitting. I feel like I always have a cheat sheet to create a painting in one sitting and to make sure that it is exactly how I would like it to be. My very first tip is to thumbnail before doing the rough sketch on your canvas. This is something I always do and I would be unsuccessful without being able to see the form of an image before adding details is extremely important, especially for me. Some people have different preferences on the type of work they want to create, but if you're asking for my opinion, I love to create graphic paintings. I like to have bold shapes, bold colors, something to really draw you in, and that's something that gives me a lot of pleasure when I'm painting. Having that small thumbnail before doing my rough sketch will let me know that this is exactly the composition and the shape that I want to create with my painting. My second tip is to consider the color palette, expression, mood, and main elements of your piece. These are all important when planning your painting before sketching anything out, before executing, understanding what you want your viewer to feel. The amount of details and the level of finishing touches that you want to add to a piece will vary greatly depending on what you want to communicate with your audience. I always love to select several elements that will stand out to my viewer before committing to a composition or to a sketch. What do you want to jump out to your audience first? I just made a video on composition. I will link it down in my description so that you can watch that if you're looking for information on visual hierarchy or composition. But for me, for this painting, I knew I wanted the main element of the painting to be the bright red color. I've been obsessed with red recently. I've never been someone who loves the color red. I don't think it suits me at all, but recently I've just had an obsession and I wanted to create a painting with red. Now that it's Valentine's Day, I wanted to have something kind of Valentine's inspired. I hate to admit it, but I love Valentine's Day because, well, at the moment I'm obsessed with red and pink and Valentine's Day is just red and pink everywhere. It's amazing. And hearts, oh my goodness. I love this more modern color palette of red, pink, and lime green. I'm sure in in like one or two years it's gonna be so outdated but in the moment I am loving it and I wanted to utilize it in this painting. You'll see how the colors will shift as I'm editing the very final image but for the moment, I loved the color palette that I selected. I always preach that you should be selecting skin tones that are more in the mid-tone range, and even if they're lighter or darker skin tones, you can darken them up or lighten them up with overlay layers. Something that I've been trying to do recently is to use more extreme colors and extreme versions of colors and have a lot more contrast in my pieces. So in this piece, I think I selected such a fair skin tone for my subject and I think in the end it paid off and it was successful but I was so worried in the whole process that maybe I selected the wrong color. As somebody who doesn't paint with very bright colors, painting with this super bright skin tone and the lime green and the red was killing my eyes. I was playing the office in the background and going from staring at my screen to like glancing over to the office. The whole show looked absolutely gray. It's like, are my eyes okay right now? So if you paint with bright colors all the time, I have no idea how you do it. It was super taxing on my own eyes, but I love the end result of the painting. For me, knowing that the colors of this piece were my main focus, 
I knew that I didn't want to add intricate detail through patterns or backgrounds. I hope to one day level up and be able to create a cohesive piece implementing beautiful backgrounds or even grander details, but for now, I think focusing on painting simple elements in my canvas thoughtfully is much more important than giving myself a difficult assignment. Since I'm not drawn to art creation at the moment because it hurts my body and my eyes and my head. I want to create as seamless of a process as possible for myself to encourage myself to continue painting. So simplicity is something that I'm embracing in my paintings and working with. I really hope to be able to create huge paintings to create intricate backgrounds and outfits and storylines in my paintings but it's going to be baby steps for me to begin with and to get back into digital painting my next tip is going to be to zoom out of your canvas and look at the whole form instead of only looking at zoomed in details i know that it can make my speed paint videos kind of painful to watch when i'm zooming in and out and in and out in my digital painting process and so i try to keep it at a minimum but i think it is so important to zoom out and look at the whole effect that your details are creating for the piece. Sometimes I find that being so zoomed in and painting a specific strand of hair, I pull out and realize how cluttered and claustrophobic those details can be in the piece. Do not be afraid to erase details that you've already painted in. I know it can feel sacrilege to paint over something that has taken you such a long time to create, but if you're going for an impactful end result, you do have to make these sacrifices if you've accidentally spent too much time over complicating some details in your painting you can take that as a learning experience instead of letting those details remain in the painting and creating something that may be a little too busy or not so cohesive i think several times in this painting process you will see me paint over some details that I realized were not necessary and did not look their best in the piece. Sometimes fewer details can be so much more impactful than having every single part of your painting detailed. Sometimes working with color and lighting can be so much more impactful than just working with details. And so it depends on what your style is, what you're trying to achieve. But for me in this piece, color and contrast were the main things I wanted to focus on. And so I knew that Anything that distracted from the black of the eyes and the red of the lips and the earrings and her top, I knew that everything needed to be complementary, not to take away from where I wanted the viewer's eye to go. This might be annoying to hear, but don't leave things like hair or hands unfinished. Those are details that will show your skill and set your painting apart. I recommend that you make deliberate stylistic decisions if you don't want to finish those parts of the painting. I personally rarely see a painting that I think is more effective because the hands haven't been finished or fleshed out. Hands are just so difficult to paint and hair is so tedious to paint clothing is as well if you know me and my work so if you are going to be adding hands to your painting make sure to take the time to add details to those hands and to take reference photos so the hands can look sort of realistic or proportionate if you hate drawing hands or you struggle with it or you don't think that you do it well you can omit adding those details to your piece because they will only sort of pull down the overall effect that you will create with the final result. If you're struggling with painting hands or hair, I totally recommend doing many studies on them, drawing them in your sketchbook until you feel more comfortable, even doing quick five to 10 minute studies of different poses so that you can be a little bit more comfortable painting them. My very next tip is how to know how to finish a piece. You're adding details and you might be in this middle stage where the painting is looking good but it's not finished. And for me when I get to that point, I like to add sharp edges to my piece. Like in this painting, I outlined the side of her face right under her chin and added a tiny bit of line work around her hair because it is so pale and didn't contrast with the skin. So those tiny dark 
details and lines add emphasis to my painting. The bright highlights I add are often in a contrasting tone to the whole piece. In this piece, I had almost a lime green highlight, but sometimes I'll do a very bright pink or a light blue in the reflections so that it can contrast with the tones that I'm placing those highlights on. Too many small highlights will make each highlight progressively less special or less interesting. The more highlights you have, the less they pop and draw the eye to, so use them carefully. I like to use highlights to convey textures such as glossiness around the eyes or on the nose. In this painting, as you can see, I added no highlights to the lips because I wanted them to have a very matte appearance. Working with those different textures can finish a painting. I also love to cluster little fairy lights together for a magical look or to add freckles to the face to add extra interest. Something that is pretty common in all of my digital paintings or work in general is freckles, the little stars that I add in highlights. In this case, I added dark freckles across the entire subject, not just across her nose bridge or on her face, so that they could pop against her pale skin and my painting would look a little bit more thoughtful, planned, uh, and cohesive. My very last tip is to add a touch of realism to your piece. I love to add either clumpy mascara, folds in the skin or clothing, or in this case, I added the grown out roots to her bleached hair. Details like these can make your painting stand out in the viewer's memory. They're like talking points. Little details that nobody else would think to add to their piece are what will make a viewer remember that piece in their own mind and come back to the painting. So I think details like the grown out roots or even the little bows on her top are special and will make a viewer remember this piece in a more effective way than if I had not added those details. I hope this can help you figure out what details to add to your pieces, how to know when to stop and when to finish a piece. If you're struggling, my advice is always step back take a break from your painting and come back with a fresh perspective. A lot of times looking at a painting for too long can desensitize you to maybe something that is glaringly wrong in what you're painting or something that could be improved. I would love to create a video talking about the very final stages of editing my paintings because I always put them through a photo editing app, add some grain, tweak some of the colors, maybe add overlays just to make the painting look a little bit more finished. The same way that if I took my own selfie, I would run that selfie through Visco, add grain, add sharpness, add a filter. So I do the exact same thing with my paintings. I would love to share that process, but it's so different for every single painting and it takes a lot of experimentation. Hopefully I will be showing you that one day. Check out the links in my description for my Amazon storefront where I link a lot of the tools that I use regularly and my desk supplies and I will also have links to my social media down in the description. Like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this video was helpful for you and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!